All right, here we go. Playoff time. Got to watch Cloud9 die. What a sad end to a super team. Do, 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 do. Get the vods. How's everybody today? It's going good. Got myself another Chipotle chicken marinated burrito bowl with my homemade fire roasted salsa. It's delicious. Udon with Brussels sprouts? Nice. Sounds good. Has there ever been a Western super team that performed? G2. Will you teach us how to make salsa during cook during a cooking stream? Sure. I can do that for you. Yes, it's easy. It's very easy. So I have a grill or a grill pan. My lazy ass made some quesadillas with beans. I mean, beans are great. I could have made a quesadilla with kimchi with this chicken. Monty does a cooking stream and no one shows up. I swear he will go back to our comments and ban us all. I will. I will. You guys are playing with fire. If, if I do these cooking streams and I have to bring stuff back, I'm going to go back to America in May. And then when I come back at the end of May, I'm going to bring all my cooking stream shit. I have to bring, like, more cameras, my switcher. It's going to take a lot of effort. So if you guys don't fucking watch the cooking stream, I'm going to be really angry. After all of this shit about Monty, can you cooking stream? Monty, will you cooking stream this? You will be destroyed. Are you self-taught cook or how did you learn? Um, combination of being self-taught and like spending my summers in college cooking in a Thai restaurant. YouTube chat getting ignored. What's my favorite food to cook? Uh, Mexican and Thai. I don't know. I like everything. What am I watching first? C9 versus TL. You need a recipe for the tteokbokki in your fridge? Okay. All right. What's the X Factor tool slash piece of equipment in the kitchen I'm missing out on? Probably Instant Pot, electric air, uh, pressure cooker, or air fryer. Or an enamel Dutch oven. Those are all very useful if you don't have those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Understood about the pausing. Yep. I do respond to YouTube. Sometimes it just takes me a little bit longer. Fudge needs to go. The fudge must be packed. The fudge must be packed. All right, here we go, guys. Uh, Cloud, I'm going to take Callista first. Leaves up Varus. We do see the Ash Ban. 
And Talia, that has been one of APA's better, more meta champions. You may be wondering about the Rel ban. Uh, Core JJ has historically been a very good Rel player, and he's had really good Rel performances in the playoffs so far, so that's not terribly surprising. <laughs> Taking out JoJo's Yone, Nico, so really targeting JoJo in this draft. All right, we're just going to early pick Renata Glass because it's a very early Renata Glass pick. Sig's going to be. God damn it, dude. God damn it. So, Poke Comp already developing here for Team Liquid. Um, there's going to be really big range issues with Callista, really, and so they need a range. Okay, Oriana not taken yet, so they're going to go ahead and grab that. Zyra, oh man, this is such a long range composition. They're trying to stop the Renata Glass from doing anything. This is a pretty big laning problem, unless C9 can all in, so they have to actually have to take jungle fights, I think, on the bottom side of the map. Cheap non-stick pan and a good cast iron pan. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, a, f you know, $40 non-stick pan is great. Yeah, and good cast iron is always great. He believes in Cloud9. He also does not know how to spell the word believe. This man cannot spell. That's a big yikes. Yikes, guys. Yikes. That's a yikes for me. And there are so many junglers right now open. We're definitely going to be focusing on these because Vi is still uh, unbanned as well. Vi, one of the perfect pairings here. That was used super effectively against APA to get a bunch of kills on him. Uh, early in the season, but it could be used on the other side. A uh, Zyra pick is really interesting, but when you're just going to pick uh, the Renata so early, I mean, why not punish it, okay? Love it. Okay, Nocturne, Volibear, Twisted Fate, which has been one of Fudge's better champs. Lee Sin, taken out of the pool. Uh, blind. All right, we're not blinding. We're just going to... All right, Team Liquid has been playing a lot of jacks on the top side for impact, so we're just going to take the Renekton into it. Okay, okay. So what are we going to take here? What are we going to take here? Sedge? Oh, it's Jungle Jax. All right, this has been running around, obviously, a lot in Korea and China. And we're just going to flex it into the jungle and take Cassante. So they have a good front line. Jax is going to be very powerful at potentially finishing people off, right? After the poke that you get from this. Very good objective control. Um... I don't know, man. Like, you've got good engage here, but this is pretty low range, right? This is pretty low range. So you're going to be playing into Zyra, Varus, and Zig's poke. And if you walk too far forward, you can actually just get Jack's Counter-Strike. Or somebody's going to get pulled off and isolated by the Cassante. Um, ball delivery will be done via Maokai. But if you screw up the Maokai ults, that's like your only form of engage, really. So could be pretty bad for C9. It's really the range difference that I think is off-putting here with Cloud9's composition. All right, I mean, obviously I'm a big Umti fan, have been for a long time. I was singing his praises on Breon when he was on a bad team. <laughs> TLS import slot, remember. I mean, so does Cloud9, so... Cloud9 also has an import slot that they probably should have used. Yeah, I was going to say Wild Turtle's number one. Hello, Squidfish over on YouTube. You just came back from the bars acting a fool. Does at least get the knowledge of where Umpty is going to start on which side? Raptors, of course, awarded as well here by Team Liquid. So take a look at the early pushing with both comets hitting. 
Yep, we've also got cleanse on both of the marksmen this time around. Very mm -hmm. much understandable. There's a lot of lockdown that guarantees a lot of damage coming out from either direction. Yeah, it is so there has been just a little bit of Zyra played, but this was obviously a plan that they had by leaving Callista up and assuming that the Callista Renata Glask was going to be taken. And they are just double Comet in the bot side, really just built for poke. It will be a lethality Varus almost certainly. saying in champs of life even when zyra was nowhere close to the meta he was always spamming it in in houses in champion skew yep. this is one of the guys that has kept alive this aggressive zyra support play they get level two at the same time though so nothing there zig's asol this is the record on it thoughts on summon going to lla finals everything else a combined i don't give a fuck definitely performing so much better on these champions People criticize the guy, but he really can make it work on these control mages. He's very adept at getting to late game and performing in those team fights. Umpy going top, might be looking for the on these champions. People All right, so this is just a straight. What the fuck is Fudge doing? He he literally has a ward. That's Fudge's ward. That's Fudge's ward. He knows he's at Krugs. That was Fudge's ward! That was Fudge's ward! He knew he was at Krugs! He's pushing up so far. I mean, Impact knows, like, he's he's less than 50% health. He's level 2. He doesn't even have W. Okay, he got W right there. He literally leveled and got W. He didn't have W going into that fight. He's level 2. Look at this. E, there's his E, there's his Q. He has no W because he's level 2. He literally gets 3 off of this. Stuns Umpty, but it's too late. Oh my god, what the fuck was going on in this top side? This timing, like, he uses Slice and Dice here. To trade when he knows that Krugs have been finished at two and a half minutes. Like, I, I just don't know why you would do this. Lexley, thank you for your subscription. Guys, this is so bad. Okay, also, on this side of the map, the ward goes down. Okay, so let's talk about this. The Faker ward was here right at the start of the game. Okay? That was placed down. But if you don't see the Maokai taking this camp by two and a half minutes, you know he's done topside and is probably crossing over right now to do Raptor. So you, that's why the ward timing comes down. But Zig's... APA messes up the ward timing. He's got the ward the whole time, by the way. He has the ward the whole time. He just gets super greedy on the timing, trying to maximize it. And as he's warding... Actually, this is a good read by Blabber. I take it back. So, Blabber's at 12. So, he actually, he actually literally doesn't finish this camp. He doesn't finish the camp. So APA is warding at the correct time if he actually finishes the camp. But Blabber decides, fuck this camp. I'm not going to take it because of the gank in top. And APA, he sees APA going over here. It's a good play by Blabber. APA's timing was fine. I take it back. <laughs> Komari Masita, thank you. Let's go, you say. Very good. We are going. We are actively going.
And again, this digs now with no flash. This is a strategy in the regular season that a lot of teams took versus TL. Is Impact a U.S. citizen yet? No, I think he just has a green card. That cross, thank you. Almost to my level one hype train, guys. You too can give me your Bezos bucks. Dude, Fudge, like, putting his E on cooldown is so fucking wild to me. This is a good call by Blabber, guys. He literally just stops doing the Raptor camp. Thank you, the JMZ. Apparently, I needed a reminder to resub. You all need reminders to resub. Shame on all of you, freeloaders. Ariel EJ giving out five community subs. Thank you. Very generous. You love to see it. Actually, a good play by Blubber, though. <laughs> Giving subs to help maintain sanity in these trying times. Yeah, it's okay. Everybody just thinks it's totally cool that Saudi Arabia gets involved in League of Legends now. Uh, does he want to be a U.S. citizen? So, though, gets taxed still if he goes back to Korea? Sort of, but you you only get taxed. Uh, with U.S. taxes after your first, like, $110,000 of income. Otherwise, you pay, lo pay local taxes in Korea. They have a tax agreement, like they do with many other nations. I'm thinking about joining a local Muay Thai gym. Hell yeah. Any any tips or tricks I should know before going? Hope your cardio is good. I mean, if you're a noob, it, it won't really matter. You will get, you will get, you come back here, POTUS Barnacle, and you tell me how much your body hurts after going for the first couple of times. He didn't like aggressively go all the way to hover bottom side of mid lane. And it is going to be the trick. Your, your core and your cardio has never had a workout like you are about to deal with. Back through the top side and go up towards Grub. Blabber's just going to move on down towards bottom side and try and control your dragon stacking with your Callista Renata lane. Yeah, we haven't touched on it too much, um, but Jan is actually down. What do you think the solution is as a small cog in the wheel about taking Saudi money? Just like, don't fucking do it. <laughs> if you, like, look, I, here's the thing, guys. I actually don't have a problem with taking Saudi money. I have done consulting for ESL post their takeover by the Saudis. To be very clear, I've said it a million times on these shows. Okay? My problem is, if you spent a lot of time talking publicly about Neom or Carlos or Thorin and, like, virtue signaling your little ass off... You better fucking come down on this one because this is a million times worse. Just look, all you have to do is be like, I like the bag. Okay, go get it. Don't just pretend to have ethics. Don't LARP your ethics online, guys. It's ridiculous it took 14 years for Rise to realize the appeal of players talking smack in all chat. Imagine what could have been the era with really big league personalities, Piglet and Dardock. Would have become supervillains? Yeah, I mean, Riot is 10 years too late on everything. Boss Tone, thank you for your Twitch Prime sub. Hello from Bulgaria. I watch all of your LFN content. Thank you very much. APA actually just getting clapped in lane. Jojo's been very good in lane in the last two series, though, despite the fact that his team is losing. Oh. That is so unfortunate. Like, 20 HP left. Even even Oriana's empowered auto there couldn't get it. It's actually surprising. Oh, man. I like I like how APA is still greeting to try and cue some minions here, so even though Satchel Charge is down. He literally is trying to stay in range, and he gets absolutely wrecked. Yeah, Pot saves him for sure.
RTL and Impact is not gonna stop just yet. Fudge now in danger, but he's got backup too. Blabber's coming in to save the day. The difference is it's a one for nothing for TL and Impact. Fudge just getting clapped up here. Man, Impact is still so good. I'm digging into a little bit of cross mapping and see Maokai in the top side. Yeah, it leaves him super vulnerable now. Three HP, oh, thank you, YouTube chat. Thoughts on having to watch TL at MSI? It's a grim time. I love APA versus Jovi. <laughs> yeah, that's tough for Jojo here in the mid lane. He drops the shockwave again on APA. Fudge is coming down. APA trying to take Jojo with him. And he that's funny. He will die to the roam from Fudge, but the one for one trade, it works out for Team Liquid's mid lane. Okay, so how important are mid kills uh, compared to mid mental? Because everybody, <laughs> everybody is getting in on the mid mental game now. Fudge with the roam down and flash in for the kill. But Fudge doesn't have TP. So impact just gets free plate. They actually lose more minions because the wave is going to be consistently pushed in the top side. They trade it for flash for flash, so it's actually a net negative play for C9. It's actually a bad play. He's getting two plates, maybe. Nice cleanse. Yon eats the ulti and then uses the cleanse. Vulcan. Nice flash. Flash handshake, but it does not work. So C9, yes, they're going to get both summoner spells out of Yon, but they will not get any kills. Oomt is here to cover, so. Yon has to block it. Traded flash for flash, but Yon is vulnerable now. And then Vulcan looks for the correct play, the follow up, but the, the flash, the cleanse were really fast there from Yon. Gets the minions in between them. I think well handled by both sides there. Mm hmm. Good reactions there. Yon, definitely somebody who has had a spotlight on him recently, especially for playoffs here for Team Liquid, with them spending so much time <laughs> bringing him up as we get uh, act, <laughs> act three of our mid lane banter. And I feel like Jojo, he's got a little bit of something to prove after last week, where he became one of only two mid laners ever to go through an entire series without getting a kill. Uh -huh. It was kind of ironic because he did it against Jensen, and Jensen was actually the only other mid laner to ever be shut out for a kill in a playoff series. Uh, so Jensen had it done to him and then did it to Jojo. Yeah, well, both mid laners on the board uh, this time around as the Grubs are causing a ruckus. Yeah, C9 sending four players up to deal with these. Team Liquid has already claimed four Grubs. They got the first three in that objective trade that we talked about, and they already claimed one here in the second set. But C9 is going to try to stop them from hitting that five Grub breakpoint. Nice long range chain! Oh. And the beautiful snipe to follow it up. Yon and Core JJ get the 2v1 kill on Berserker to punish the roam from Vulcan for the Grub. And the thing that makes that so much more impressive is the earlier chains of corruption that forced out the cleanse from Yon. Immediately when the cooldown's back up, he instantly hits it on him again. This time they know he does not have that cleanse. You have to hit him back to back like that. And this is the stats I was talking about. Jojo was one of the worst series. Well, probably just the worst series he's ever had in his career. I don't know about that. I think Jojo individually played very well. His team is just trash. He really wants to have a bounce back one here. Yeah, and the, the entire team of Cloud9. That series versus FlyQuest was surprising even to FlyQuest members, they were saying. But the whole reason this play goes off is because you get the support roam up to Grubs. 
And oftentimes people have tried to use those support roam timings to get it's a nice all in. Aggressive. The most painful thing there for Berserker was off because you get the support roam up to grub. You haven't played this well. But the whole reason this play goes they play this well. So Yun takes aggro here with his hail of arrows. It's like a max range. This could have been flashed by Berserker. Oh no, his flash is not up. His flash is barely not up, so he just dies. It's very nicely played. It's really nicely done by Yun. It's like max range various play. It's nice. So a very good play by Tail. No, he didn't have flash up, Azil. Okay, so it's, I believe, well, it's a, it was a replay cooldown, so maybe I'm wrong. We'll go back and make sure. Oh, it was up. Was it? Yeah, it was up. He could have flashed the chains. It looked like it wasn't, wasn't up, but the, the summoner spells are always scuffed in the replays. That's why we have to go back to live to see if it was actually up or not. But yeah, he could have flashed that. Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, TL's comp with the range that it has, I think has a huge advantage over Cloud9s, especially because they're already behind. Oh, uh, Spawn says he had flash in the reaction cam. Yeah, he did. Spawn would be correct. Yeah, it's just free, guys. C9 does, is doing a good job of controlling the Drake, though. Core JJ is actually fucking drunk, though. Uh, he should not be playing for Vision right now. Oh, he sees them. I guess he sees the Maokai wa walk away. Comes back again. That's true. There's not really a reason why the Callista should be in River, but he does see Callista in the mid lane. And he does want to keep put it, putting on the pressure in the bot side. But he can't be over there when his jungler's on top. And they see Callista in mid. Blabber's actually making plays this game, guys. He's actually doing all right. I want to see APA trash talk Trophy. Me too, buddy. Ellis on streams tend to be a bit of a fudge defender. He always has been. Fudge is his friend. Dom was super down on him. I mean, I think I haven't seen it, but he he literally died to a level three Jax gank when he knew exactly where Jax was. 
so that's pretty shit. We'll see how he plays out the rest of this series. I don't know if I called either of these series bangers. Well, what, what should I be watching today then, guys? These are playoffs. This is as, the highest stakes matches that we've got right now. I, I, I don't know if I call your a, a, your opinion a banger, Pimit09. You, you let me know what other bangers I should be covering. You let me know. Yeah, the next this next Drake, the Infernal Drake is gonna be really telling, guys, because Yun is gonna Yun and the rest of Team Liquid are gonna have really big priority from taking down mid turret. And they should have you know good vision control over the objective with their poke composition. Oh god, he's gonna take bot too. Now they should have even more control. Yep. Very good. They have more of a gold lead now. Okay, 50 seconds until Drake. Better see some recalls coming in. Okay, we do. Everybody's recalling. Very good timing. Cassante not there yet. Cassante does have TP, though. Can clear wave and recall and then TP in. Good TP from APA. You want to you want to TP early there. So you have a chance to push wave before Drake, Drake spawns. Help your team get mid control so you can get vision. Umpty's actually here this time, so Core JJ doesn't have to die walking into river because he's Zyra. Okay, they have total control. C9's going to have to give this up or lose the game. Okay, JoJo's trolling. So, as we said, Cassante has time to go back and still TP in for the start of Drake. 20 seconds. Everybody is now recalled. APA has finished his Seraph's Embrace. So, very good timing. Blabber, Blabber's trying to cover, but Umpty's already behind him and they have TP. Fudge is... By the way, Fudge is late here, guys. So, look at what TL, do, or look at what TL does and what Impact does. He pushes this out. So, let's go back a little bit. Fudge is pushing up. Umpty covers... Right. Recalls. They clear out this wave. Impact walks back to turret. Recalls. Fudge starts his recall and then cancels it. So he actually decides to push forward. So this is a mixed call, guys. They should not be trying... If Fudge is going to stay, so you have you have two choices. So one, top recall. So you can set up for TP, right? Top recall slash bot push. Or you can like give up drag, which doesn't matter, right? It's just one drag. But it does slow you down, and I think the scaling and range advantage is pretty big for Team Liquid. Give up drag and push top. What you cannot do is cancel your recall, push top, and then push bot at the same time, because you will not have TP available to make any kind of counterplay on the bot side. Right? So JoJo, like... You can't do this. You you know Cassante has TP. You know he's in base. Um, it's a very good play around the side by Umti. Okay, he dies. Okay. Fudge is here just to take some damage. And then they lose Drake. It's really fucking bad macro by Cloud9. Really fucking bad. You can discuss outcomes, I don't care. I know the outcome of this match. 
I'm not here to be surprised by what happens. I'm here to do analysis. It's actually so fucking bad. Like, I don't, I don't, the, the shot calling is so fucking whack on Cloud9. I, they actually just can't play team, okay, Fudge's gonna get brought over the wall and just die. Oh, no he's not. Just kidding, they're gonna use all their ults on him to kill him. And, unfortunately, I mean, Fudge plays this kind of well. Right, he gets pulled in, but he actually flashes the jack stun. And Impact should not have gone in there. Jojo, Pian, and Vulcan are here. They both have ult. So, he's dead. Uber Blackdorn, welcome back. Raccoon Feast. Stream is dying. Oh, no. Uh, should be okay now. Looks like he didn't completely drop. It was just a, a, a quick hiccup. Okay, they literally don't know where any of TL are, so they're pushing forward together, but hilariously, TL has set a trap for them. They stayed after pushing this tier 2 and bot side. This is a funny, funny call. It's probably a core JJ call. Because they realize, guys, they realize what Team Liquid realizes is this ult is down and this ult is down. This is kind of a safe play to make because you have all of your crowd control up here. And they think it's safe because Impact is dead. Blabber actually just going to... Oh, nice. Okay. Well, Yon walks up. Is ready to use Chain of Corruption. Blabber flashes it. Cleanses. Maokai W. It's a cute little trap, though. Well, has no mana now. Uh, it's pretty important that uh, C9 gets that. It wasn't worth the trade in the bot side. Um, it wasn't worth the trade in the bot side to give up your mid lane because you need that protection as a... You don't need it, but it's helpful to have that protection of like a hard point to fall back to, right? As a poke composition. And basically you had an out here, so now you can just leave. And they actually canceled their recall. So what, what should have happened here is that if you get back faster... Then you can, uh, you can either use Ziggs ult to clear the mid wave, or you can send Varus or Ziggs back faster. Uh, 
as Fudge shows up bottom to try to stop some of the recalls. Meanwhile, he's just going to waste as much of their time as he can. It won't be much. Shutdown goes over to Fudge. And actually, one of the biggest things in these last couple kills that happened are the flashes that were blown. I think it was a really smart job of Team Liquid baiting here because they were able to get Blabber's flash as well. And if you're a team that has to get the... Yeah, they're not going to have flashes in the next Drake fight either. So, you know, they take a fight in the neutral here. And get it's it's more important that C9 has flashes uh, because they're lower range. They need to close the gap or dodge poke. So flashes, in my opinion, don't have the same value necessarily. And Yun will have cleanse back up for the Drake fight. Hey Monty, would it be worth it to watch the LPL games today since Rich confidently said that the LPL is regu regularly max match fixed? Um, I don't know about the match fixing in the LPL guys one way or the other. I can say that I am very confident that match fixing was occurred had occurred during my time casting in Korea by Korean teams. <clears throat> All the Korean journalists know about it, and they don't want to talk about it because they're afraid that it might destroy the scene like it did to Brood War when the match-fixing scandal came out. Um, and Western journalists are also aware of it, they just haven't published on it. So, it's pretty bullshit, in my opinion. There are a lot of very famous people that probably should be banned forever for match-fixing in Korea. But in I can tell you, years ago, it 100% happened in Korea. And I can tell you that Riot knows about it too, but they don't want to. They don't want it to come to light because otherwise they'd have to take disciplinary action. No, it wasn't T one. As far as I should have amended my statement, to my knowledge, it was not T one. What kind of match fixing are we talking about? Throwing games. Pretty BS that people pretend it didn't slash doesn't exist. That's, that's Korean culture, man. Pretending the bad things don't exist is Korean culture. If you don't acknowledge that your country that is chock full of whores has a bunch of whores, then the whores don't exist. If you don't acknowledge that gay people exist, then they must not exist. Oh, Blabber gets over the wall thanks to falling empty. He has no flash. Impact is the top lane goat. Uh, I guess if you have literally never watched another region of League of Legends. Have you thought of doing spoiler-free VOD reviews? No. There are other places you can go for that. That's not the purpose of this content. I gotta say, I love the Team Liquid makeover that we have seen from regular season to playoffs. We had so many episodes of the dive where we're talking about, oh my god, TL, all they do is look for dragons and scale. You know, they, they're always trying to get the Aurelian soul. The smoke are you sure SKT wasn't involved? I'm not sure. It's possible. But I am not aware of SKT being involved. 
and they're utilizing this dig strength of destroying the towers to just completely move up the timers. Really impressive stuff, especially this time around from Team Liquid. Four and a half thousand gold lead, uh, plus the Baron now makes it super easy to continue sieging. And so the question, hold on now, APA getting caught with a shockwave there, the change of corruption, aren't gonna find a whole lot. Blabber sending out the ulti, impact disengages. Yawn and APA are not the ones under threat. And so the question, hold on now. Yeah, this is the problem, is that you you actually just have to use Oriana ult here, but it doesn't actually, st I mean, use Maokai ult too, but you actually just can't close the gap on the poke. Is it, I mean, TL is playing the co poke composition very well, to their credit. As TL continues their pressure, the question I was going to pose before that scrap is, how worried are you about this game state from the point of view of C9? I mean, I think it's over, honestly. Like, I, th I think it's all, uh, so hard to actually come back from this position with how TL are playing. Playing heavily through side, being first the objectives, you know, not allowing Cloud9 to really have that setup that they need to be able to make these fights work. I think it is going to take a miracle for Cloud9 to be able to come back from here. Uh, TL are just looking bulletproof, and they have so much damage now, plus the gold advantage. If you walk in, yeah, sure, that didn't do that much to Blabber, but Blabber's having to retreat from his own tower because of poke. You hit JoJo with one or two of those spells, the fight's already done before it starts. Yeah, here's where I would try and give the other side and be like, oh man, but Cloud9 have a good team fight, you know, if they get there engaged, then it can be explosive and you'll usually get a bunch of kills uh, and snowball that way. But this game also really reminiscent of the first game of Cloud9 series versus FlyQuest, mm -hmm. where, like we highlighted, they gave them the Berserker Callista plus actually doing it in a very fast pace. Only 25 is, Watching Cloud9 at play is just so sad, guys. Berserker and Vulcan literally have one kill participation at 25 minutes into this game. There are still openings for Cloud9 to try and go for and get that dream team fight. The Maokai plus the... No, there's not. They will never be in range to get a dream team fight with this composition versus the composition the Team Liquid has. It's almost a full level away right now, but the rank 3 Oriana ultimate would go a long ways there as well. I think the reality is, though, I don't think TL are actually going to push for the inhibs for a long time. I think they're just going to take over the enemy jungle, start farming multiple quadrants of the map, and just slowly increase that lead. Play for dragons, say, you have to come flying through your own jungle into us, into this poke, every single time. Yeah, we're not going to risk walking up to your base and giving you that hard engage. Just allow MT to farm three quadrants, become a monster, to where no one's even going to be able to answer him in the side lane. Like, he should even win 1v1 against Fudge, probably, at this point. Uh, if he's already level yeah, MT being already level 14 is pretty huge. He's two levels above Blabber. Meanwhile, Berserker got the levels, which is completely useless for an AD carry for the most part. He's the one who's ahead of his lane opponent here. Plus, if Team Liquid do get to the point where they just control the entirety of the map for the next 10 minutes, they get those next two drakes, it's Infernal Soul. That is so nasty with a poke composition as the foundation you're building. It yeah, it's terrifying. Infernal Soul is absolutely terrifying if Teal gets it. So much free damage with the poke comp. How the team choose to prioritize where they want to go and how they want to dance back and forth between these objectives. Yeah, it can become really difficult, you know. Um, but for TL, they have so much of this vision prioritized towards that bottom side. They clearly want to play towards the dragons. And I don't know, you know, if you're C9 and you go up there and you start that dragon, or excuse me, you start that Baron, and all of a sudden you get caught in the pit, there's so much AoE, there's so much poke, it's going to be very, very difficult, even if you secure it, to be able to get out afterwards. So. Okay, they already have Drake control set up. Nothing that C9 can do. They could try and trade for Baron, maybe. They're trying to get for them to actually commit to it. Yeah, the Ziggs bomb takes four people to kill Grump. Yeah. It fits so, conveniently, right? so they just leave it here so it's free. What the fuck? What are they doing? They're actually just trying. I think they're trying just to get Baron Vision. But then they go take a detour at Grump. And there's a wave pushing up, and TL's like, where are the people defending this mid turret? So Fudge has to flash out. It's actually fucking free. It's free real estate. 
no one from Cloud9 is responding. So they have to be out over by the Baron. They have to be out getting vision. They have to be somewhere else on the map. They sat and they were very patient. Only one member walked up. It was Impact. The it's other four from Steel all sat behind him until no one responds. And they're saying, okay, if you're not going to defend it, we're going to take it. And now they go back out on the map. And they are the ones clearing out the vision, reclaiming it on that Baron area. And now the Dragon has spawned. Look at the map on the bot side for Cloud9. No wards in sight. It is so tough. Here, we, here, it, here it comes, guys. The epic fudge TP. No, the TP is coming in. Fudge is going to be behind Team Liquid. No, no. Yawn and APA are not he has no flash because he had to use it. All right. All right. Good fight. But Umpty kills everybody, right? It's a good fight for Cloud9, but Umpty is just going to clean up everybody probably. Yep. Uh, why did God grant me these powers of premonition? Vulcan. <laughs> oh my god. Alright, so let's take a look at this fight. It is, it ends up being a good TP because they don't have the vision. On this, but Blabber doesn't have flash, remember, because he blew it defending the turret. So it's a good Maokai ultimate. So they get onto the back line, but zoning Zyra ult here. He's on to Yun. Actually, okay. All right. Unfortunately, Impact and Umpty play this super well. So the Zyra ult goes down. Impact is zoning them out too. He's zoning out Berserker, and Umpty just flashes on top of Berserker. Bailout doesn't actually save him. Oh, Bailout does save him, actually. But there's still a Jax, a very fed Jax next to him. Jesus. Damn. I, I mean, they just... You can see how desperate they get. And yeah, they killed the poke line, but unfortunately the Jax is just so fed. Wow. Yun has flash. He does have flash. Does he not use it? Cleanse. Oh, he doesn't feel like flash. He could have flashed over here. Get a flash this way out of the Renata ult. C9 team fighting macro pretty bad this year. Yeah, their team fighting is fucking horrible. And their macro is fucking horrible. But good thing Impact is so good at creating space here. Impact and OMT literally distract three people during this entire thing and kill them. <laughs> Do you guys see this? The shockwave actually brings the Jax into range so that he can leap strike on top of Jojo. That's pretty funny. See that? That's the shockwave right there that moves him over the wall. And he's getting attacked by the Zyra plant, so he actually gets in leap strike range. Damn. It's right. I love OMD, so I'm glad to see this. I got draft is pretty bad from C9, though. You just got outranged mega big time. Why does it keep... Why are you... No... Where's the dark mode? It keeps turning off my dark mode. 
because it showcases how well TL do play around Ziggs. And I know they brought this up on Caps in terms of win rate with APA on Ziggs and April versus mm -hmm. all of his other champions. All right, here we go. Okay, so they're banning the Callista this time, despite letting Cloud9 have it last time. I do, I do agree with the Rel ban. And they're going to ban the Ziggs this time now that they're on red side. Okay. Still going to take the Varus first. We're going to take Senna, Lee Sin. Okie dokie. Why are we early picking Lee Sin here? So I guess they see the Varus and they're like, okay, we have to have pressure on the Varus and we'll get a Lee Sin kick into the back line. But we could have taken Ori here, I think. Orzo, thank you for your tier one subscription. Yeah, the early Lee is interesting to me. Like you could obviously take Ori here and be very confident in your matchup. And they are going to take Tom Kench. So they're going to have a really passive bot lane. I understand why you take the Tom Kench into the Nautilus, right? And the Volibear does provide a lot of survivability. Okay, so now we're just going to ban out APA's champion, Yone, Aurelian Soul, Cassante, and Akali. We're going to blind the Renekton. Tristana mid. All right, so it's another long... I mean, TL's just playing long-range compositions here. They're going to take the Rumble into the Renekton, which can be a good matchup for the Rumble. And then we take Huey as our last pick here. Um, so at least they have more range this game, which they definitely lacked last time. Uh, but they're still going to be pressured and pushed in. So these two lanes, guys, are going to be pushed, right? And like top is also, top, actually all three lanes are going to be pushed. Probably. So Volibear, the tower dive from Volibear, dive potential from Volibear post six is huge. Huge, I think. Um, this is a really passive bot lane, and Lee Sin is going to have a tough time getting on top of Tristana, even if she can get Varus. But the thing is, if you kill Varus, it doesn't really matter, because you still have to deal with the Tristana and her ability to get resets and clean up. And getting an angle onto Trist is very difficult with Lee Sin. And flanking is going to be very hard with Renekton. Very hard, because of Nautilus, Rumble, Volibear, plus Trist W. So it feels like it's going to be really tough to play Renekton. Not even like in laning phase and then outside of laning phase. I just hit my freeze pipe. Nice. How long for one inch thick pork chops on a gas grill? Like one inch thick? Probably not that long, probably like six or seven minutes aside. Maybe five or six minutes aside. One inch isn't that much. Set a Nautilus instead of Lee Sin. I mean, you could set a Nautilus too, obviously. I, I don't understand the early Lee Sin priority. It doesn't really do anything for your composition. You don't have a plan around it. You have potential synergy with Renekton and Topside, but you have the Lee Sin has zero agency in mid and bot, and possibly no agency in Topside either. Yeah, and get a meat thermometer, true. Steak is five aside, more or less. Yeah, but you 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 want your steak medium rare, unless you're a complete degenerate. So you cook it for less time. Pork needs to be cooked thoroughly all the way through. Otherwise, it needs to be medium. Otherwise, you get parasites. 
Do you want parasites? Are you teaming with parasites? Shanyard 513. And what win con do you have? Like, what do you want to see your team doing to be able to come out with a win here? Uh, well, early game should be a little rough. And then once we start getting our ults, uh, we should be having an easier time in fights um, if things don't go too bad. So I think it should be a pretty straightforward uh, team comp to play. Yeah. Sweet. Appreciate that. I'll send it straight back to the captives. This draft is so ass. What you don't like, lose every lane, get pushed in, Volibear dives your turrets. Draft? I'm pretty sure TL's okay with this. <laughs> Nutella happens. Thank you very much. Important thing to also note, Yon is on the same pick as last game, but it is lethal tempo this time around instead of the Comet. So as opposed to lethality, should be the DPS version of Ferris instead. We'll have that front line of the farming Kench and that Renekton to have to punch through. And before we get into this, Umti has some words for Blabber after beating Hunter Thieves last week. Nutella is basically just frosting, guys. That Nutella is delicious, guys, but it is legit so bad for you. Now I just like place me play with him a lot now, right? So I'm just being honest. I I don't think Blaby is a good player in now. Right now, because I but I feel Inspire is a very good jungler. So hydrogenated palm oil in a jar, yeah, and sugar. It's good though. So I think he's gonna beat Blaber. Yeah. Tastes good, but. Do not for a second think that is good for you. It's actually probably one of the worst things you could possibly eat. <laughs> well, Umti predicted correctly, and Inspire did send Blabber down uh, to the lower bracket. And been trying AG1 for a bit, has been working wonders. Great. Yeah, I, I like it too. Let me remind you, to the position he's in now, he walked over the ward that was at Raptors. So Cloud9 saw, but couldn't really do anything about him sending away that blue buff because the bottom lane was pushing. Oh, oh. All the level, though. Why the Lee Sin pick here? I don't fucking know. It's it's not even the Lee Sin pick. I mean, the Lee Sin pick is is not good. It's not bad. It's not good. But it's it's Lee Sin at two, R two that really confuses me. Like first rotation draft red side. What are we taking the Lee Sin for? Any thoughts on the volley pick? Volley is very strong. If you have if you have all of these pushing lanes, guys, then the volley post he, he he gets a lot of opportunities to farm early, and then you can just dive turrets. So I mean, it seems fine to me. Crazy. That's two kills. He's missed out on by a grand combined total of eight health. That is so tilting to me. That is. Yeah, really that that must be hard on JoJo. Playing league is when you miss out on a kill by that much, and then you miss out on the next one by a little bit, and you're like, well, if I had that Amtome, I would have killed him for sure. Now you yep. got to start you know, questioning yourself too. Yeah. You gotta go for uh, go for some all ins later on. But turns out APA is just a calculator. So uh, playing. Have you already commented on APA as a player? I think he's improving. What do you want from this guy? Like he's he's never going to be actually good. He's a gimmick mid, and him getting better does not mean that this is like what Team Liquid should be doing, guys. Okay. Umpty's Q. Well, he picked Lee Sin. It's probably not the one you wanted. What the fuck, Blabber? You, you know you can get out of this situation, right? Look at this, by the way. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about this, guys. Okay, so Umti uses Q right here. Impact has scrap shield up. His heat is getting very high. He's about 50% HP. Okay, so you get Q. Remember, do you see this? PTA is on him. PTA is on him. He is taking 8% more damage from all sources right now. Okay? He is taking 8% more damage from all sources. He's actually just taking autos. He walks. He literally hits the Q. 
goes in for Q2, Scrap Shield is up, Impact turns on him, overheats, and just autos him. He has PTA on him. They're playing so desperate, guys. They're playing so desperate. Blabber also takes a huge amount of damage from the E. He waits until the bone plating goes away, at least. And then he fl uh, uh, Right, uh, just the, the shit cherry on top of the shit sundae is just a flash at the end, too. It's the flash at the end that really kills me, guys. Jesus Christ. Yeah, he flashes for Q range. Yeah, yeah. Towards Umpty's direction. Top side. So this could be a very good counter gank scenario. Looking for that lock up here. Hits Blabber. Sky Splitter. Because Impact's walking away. So he has to flash in. Then he W's, he w's out on the ward. Oh my god. All right. Is there something Fudge could have done here? When was Fudge's E used? I was curious if Fudge could have maybe like flash e or like tried to. I mean, you would have had to go more all in. I think he has E up. Fudge might have been able to E flash E to finish off impact, right? Used Umti for distance. Yeah, as he's up at the end. But I mean, like, it's not worth it. Just don't go in on that. Yeah, he has Ignite too. That's that's hilarious. No, okay. Wow, he nearly died to minions there. He leveled. At least they got the kill back eventually. It's a nice play by Fudge. I feel like this was the big save here. And it's even with taking a tower shot. Yeah. But he got he got the kill. I feel like if he had died there, that's it, toast. That would have been just a complete explosion. Yeah, that would actually be absolute disaster if he dies there. He lives. The triumph is the only thing that actually kept him from not dying to the minions. Uh, yeah. He is now six and he did rush towards that hex drinker. So gonna be really strong. It, it was a it was a clever stay by Fudge though, waiting for him to equalize the wave so he could actually make the play with Flash and E. I mean, he did save kind of that, but he's still very far down on CS and gold. Yeah, but APA is going to catch up on this wave pretty big. I mean, they're scared because MD6, right? This is where what I was talking about. You know, they know he's six. They know he has ult. So they have to back off because the, the threat of a turret dive is absolutely huge here because Yun is six as well. So they have volley ult and chains of corruption. It's good timing by TL. Yeah, 
APA's here. APA's made the rotation over to the fight now. Berserk is still trying to disengage. Core JJ soaking the damage of Vulcan and Jojo Bone. Core still trying to get out. And John kills off Berserker. Now C9 going back to the safety of the tier one turret as nobody on TL. I mean, there's just no way you can fight early against Team Liquid. You have to back all the way off there. Is so much better, so much better at playing aggressive. They're not even done yet. Yon with the inside route. Yon is making sure he. What are they doing? Cloud9 is posturing way too aggressively for the comp that they have. Alright, Berserker's back though. Alright, we're gonna get one. Okay, a little bit too far from Team Liquid, looks like. Oh! Some overstays for TL in this series for sure. This is insanity, but TL, they've talked about it. They're down to scrap. Fudge still has his ulti, so Impact cannot fully commit to this while he is silenced, but does have the ult and ignite himself. This, the, the fallout of this looked like it was going to be so much worse because I thought JoJo was going to get zoned off all the minions and it was going to be this full wave, you know, collected by APA and JoJo would lose his farm advantage as well. But at the end of the day, still really good stuff here from TL. Yeah, the original play, I really like the follow-up invades on blue side, but then sticking around was the greedy part there uh, where they wasted a At the end of the day, still really good <laughs> just pop an ult in the brush. Yeah, the original play, I really like the follow-up invades on blue side, but then sticking around was the greedy part there. Lol. Uh, where they wasted a bunch of extra time. And gets hit by Harpoon. Uh, and the arrivals from Cloud9 members. So definitely an overstay from Team Liquid. Sometimes they get a little too hyped up on your let's fight everything. Let's uh, let's get as aggressive as, pop, uh, as possible. But the original play was intelligent. And Fudge there pops ulti in the bush. He was actually hoping that Impact was going to spend his spells on the wave. And then yeah. he was going to be able to jump on him and kill him. But Impact actually susses it out. He, he shoots an Electro Harpoon into the bush. Hits him was, what, it, did APA whiff? It looked like he whiffed his jump. They had to use so many flashes to get out of this on their carries, which is also really bad. Yeah, he just whiffed it. on the rocket jump flashes over the wall this is insanity but tl they've talked about it they're down to scrap fudge still has his ulti so impact cannot fully commit to this while he is silenced but does have the ult and ignite himself this the, the fallout of this looked like it was gonna be so much worse because i thought jojo was gonna get zoned off all the minions and it was gonna be this full wave you know collected by apa and jojo would lose his farm advantage as well but at the end of the day still really good stuff here from tl yeah the original play i really like the follow-up invades on blue side but then sticking around was the greedy part there uh where they wasted a bunch of extra time and then you get the recalls coming out uh and the arrivals from cloud nine members so definitely an overstay from team liquid sometimes they get a little too hyped up on your let's fight everything let's uh Let's get as aggressive as yeah, it was overstay for sure. I thought it looked pretty good though, but the 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 revival of Berserker. Kind of stopped that play. You have to be careful just because of how low death timers are in the early game. All right, good catch. They get six scrubs though. So then it made the actual execution of that pick so easy. At the end of the day though, you killed the support, that's cool, but he got six scrubs. I'd way yep. rather actually have those three extra grubs in this situation than that one support kill uh, where you spent the six grubs with the Tristana and the Varus range is really huge. Especially because you guys, the grubs got taken so early. You literally have three and a half minutes to work with uh Six grubs on plates. It's pretty big. They're going to look for Yon. Dive coming in alongside the TP. Yon's the target for Blabber. As the Senna ulti flies over the top and Yon hits the dirt. The dive continues, but Vulcan's going to drop as APA reinforces. 
C9 still seeing what they might be able to find here with a 3v2. Core JJ's hanging him up as long as he can. Jojo goes for the crushing maw. He finds a little bit of CC, but not enough damage. APA and Core dancing around the molten fissure as Berserker and Blabber are still looking for their chance to re-enter. Jojo goes up. Man, Jojo's good. It's actually huge by huge by Cloud9. So now they know because they just saw the announcement that grubs have been taken. So this is free on the bot side. I mean, nobody's actually taking turret aggro right now. Oh, actually, Vulcan takes turret aggro because of bombies. When he actually is attacked by core here. He starts taking turret aggro because he burns him with Bombie Cinder. But the rest of them, it's kind of free. But he actually... Vulcan actually dies right here because of Bombie Cinder. They do a good job of just not picking up turret aggro again for a while. And, you know, really, outside of that bombies, they wouldn't have been taking really any turret aggro hardly at all for this entire uh, for this entire dive sequence. Because, for the most part, Team Liquid was pretty far beyond the turret. Nice job. It's big. Cloud9 has a gold lead now. So right now, Team Liquid, now that they've respawned, remember the respawn timers are very short. So the delay on Blabber here by Umti actually just gives them a free Drake. It's very good. Because Blabber decided to recall in Vision, so the, the Sky Splitter, the Volley Bear E, prevented him from recalling the first time and he had to move out of the way and then he gets another one. So now they actually just get a free Drake. Team Liquid has good shot call. I mean, they bounce back from these kind of bad plays very quickly. Credit to their coaching staff. And core, probably. At core and empty. Nice flash kick. Blabber's finding good kick angles. He sees that Core is out of auto range from the hook. And it's actually just free. He gets his flash, too. Nice devour. So well, well played by Cloud9. These bot side dies have actually been good. Nice to see a bit of a bounce back game here 
from the Cloud9 mid jungle. You knew you were kind of joking, oh, it's gonna be all rel and you know tanks and whatnot. <laughs> Flabber goes to Lee Sin. He has this horrible play on top side to start the game off, but it doesn't make him go back to being passive. He continues playing aggressive. He's paired up with JoJo, and they've gotten a ton done for the team. All right, only 12 kills here in a almost 14 minute game though. Those are rookie numbers. We can pump those up. <laughs> we need to get to at least a kill per minute to really live up to the action. This is a massive play for Cloud9, though, because you saw on the analyst sets at the beginning of the day, they did a breakdown of Cloud9 gold leads and win losses. Uh, they have a very low win rate if JoJo and Blabber are not ahead. Well, guess what? Those are the two players with a bunch of the kills for Cloud9 in this game, and they're going for an invade. Another fight's coming up as C9 puts all five men on the top side river. Umzi engaging initially on the fudge. They force out the dominance. The croc will drop, and Impact taking the kill. Vulcan has to flash out. As Team Liquid 9 puts a win rate if JoJo and Blabber are not ahead. Well, guess what? Those are the two players with a bunch of the kills for Cloud9 in this game, and they're going for an invade. Another fight's coming up as C9 puts all five men on the top side river. Um, the engaging. Dude, walking into this equalizer. For real. And impact taking the kill. Vulcan has to flash out. As Team Liquid won't find any more here just yet. They got a lot of help still to work with. APA jumps in. They sidestep some of the CC coming out from C9. A lot of help gauging head. Well, guess what? Those are the two players with a bunch of the kills for Cloud9 in this. So we're grouping here in order to take Harold, right? You have the pressure in the top and the mid lane. You think you can do this, but you don't actually have control over Banana Brush, so you have to rush it in order to clear out the ward. Fudge decides to go around the side into a jungle in which he has no vision. And you don't see anybody on the map. So Fudge has to use his E right away. Instead, he actually just gets hit by literally fucking everything. Core JJ flashes forward, try and get a hook. Beautiful. Team Liquid's team fighting is substantially better than Cloud9's. I don't know why he's going for that flank, though, into a choke point. Because here's the thing, guys. You do not want to be here if you are Cloud9. You could have an equalizer place here or right here. As ends up happening, right? You're basically just asking to be equalized, and then Triss starts getting resets. Right, because there's the equalizer goes down. Does an amazing job of isolating Fudge. They actually can't even respond to this, so it forces Vulcan's flash. Worth noting that they don't actually double back. Where did the I Herald egg go? Oh, it's here on empty. Okay. Sorry, I thought I was going crazy there. Yeah, so we get the Herald Eye right down onto Volibear super quick. ahead of dragon so that very well could set them up for an objective on top of it this would in case uh, a little bit of an over chase from team liquid under the tower to make sure that they get jojo and he does use his flash this time around so fudge gets to stick around with the pushing lane on top side finish up the outer top turret here pre pre-show oh boy dragon spawn first if they actually want to go for it yeah we'll see you know if tl is going to try to go out there because apa will have tp fudge will have no tp and no ulti so the next definitely a lot weaker than the rumble in this upcoming fight if they're going to scrap for it a cloud nine do have proud to start it up first here 
here, but we'll see. Renekton down 1,200 gold compared to Rumble. Rumble has arm guard now, so basically he can provide frontline pressure. Just Q into arm guard. Deal damage while you're untargetable. Very, very good. I just got followed by Tyler1 Manly Midget. What a name. What a name. Tyler one looks like Krillin, but with like just a tiny bit more hair. You know what I mean, guys? In Drake count alongside the gold that they're still leading by almost one and a half thousand. C9 is going to take the opportunity to push down mid lane, but Team Liquid's coming in to try to cut them off. Berserker manages to get everybody else out of there. What hair? Slightly more hair. But the Rift Herald earlier earned by Team Liquid is summoned up in mid, and now <laughs> things have been turned around. It is I'm just saying, Tyler 1's Krillin cosplay would be amazing. Doesn't really matter though. Again, just get back to your game plan. Tristana, side lane, push it out. APA, go ahead and get top side going. Yeah, and, and you look over at Impact. He is super fed this game. He's kept up his farm. He's got four kills. He's pretty much. I know. So now we're onto the dragon stacking. Hex tech soul. Okay, Fudge pushes bot. Gets a demolished proc. All right. He's overextended though. Yeah, they forced the Volibear ult. That's all right. Volibear ult is, I mean, level starting at level two, Volibear ult cooldown is very low, even though they nerfed it on, uh, it's not on this patch. Never mind, it's just very low in general. Would I ever do political commentary? No, I, I don't care enough, man. I find politics to be, for the most part, very boring. I keep myself aware of what's going on, obviously. Like, I read the news, but... I, I actually just hate politicians. I hate all of them. And I, I think it just slowly drives you insane doing that. I'd, I'd much rather just, you know, do esports, do cooking stuff, do lifestyle stuff. General gaming stuff would be fun too. Then do political commentary. It's just such such a grim way to live, in my opinion. A lot of those like political pundits just make me want to barf. It's like the world's stupidest game, and your battlefield is the mind of idiots who watch you. So bad. Oh my god. Huge equalizer, huge flank. Surprise rumble right in the middle. Full can use flash. C9 actually didn't use that many resources on that fight. Not a lot of sums used as a whole. That's nice. They got both of Young Summoners out. I love Hassan preaching socialism while he lives in a $5 million house. I mean, that's the funniest thing about Hassan. What he does, guys, he could do online from anywhere with a good internet connection. He doesn't actually have to live in West Los Angeles. 
He doesn't have to do that. He could live in fucking Kansas City. You know what I mean? It's crazy to me that he could espouse these values and then just be like, I need to live in, in Los Angeles. Well, it looked like, oh, it's kind of risky for them. They got two really big cooldown victories out of it. And they did have to it's like, fine, if you want to be ri rich and live in L.A., cool. But, like, don't pretend that you give a shit about lower-income people. the Varus has no summer spell, so maybe they could find an opening. And what I was saying right before that fight, it's even more important because APA is the lone teleport... His whole family lives with him? Okay, they could live elsewhere. What, what's your point? It's definitely a big deal, but at the same time, if Blabber took a little bit more... Are families incapable of living in houses that aren't $5 million? ...high-risk play, face-checking in that spot, but they were able to keep him safe with the Tom Kench, and Cloud9 just wanting to continue playing through mid. APA shows top, he has no TP, so they have to force now. So Next, you say the LCS doesn't have to be in LA. I've said it many times. I think LA should fall into the ocean as a former LA resident. It'd be for the best. All right. There we go. There's the arm guard usage. They didn't actually get a kill, though, because they engaged 4v5. Trist is split pushing. Okay, let's let's talk about this. So he, they have a choice here to really just defend the wave. And they see this TP coming in. And Impact is trying to zone here. But he goes too far forward. And, you know, they weren't respecting the possible teleport counterplay. Fudge is having a much better game this time around, I think. But you shouldn't be hooking in. I mean, really, the thing, guys, is you shouldn't be hooking in. You have to make a choice whether this is just to defend your mid turret while the Tristana pressures the Renekton in the top side. Because you don't have TP. And you actually lose arm guard and flash onto Rumble for this. So I think if you're Team Liquid, you're just really sad here because you actually got Tier 1 in the mid lane earlier and you had an opportunity to clear wave. And Core, where's his ult? I think if you just ult JoJo or Berserker right there and then walk away... You know, you your goal, you have to ask yourself, what's your goal right now? You want to get soul point in this situation. So really, the Tristana should be taking top. You should be defending this. Tristana should be recalling, and then you push out for vision. That's what should be happening here. So that you can actually threaten soul point and then soul. I do think APA, once the teleport is used, is making the right decision, like continuing to push here because you want to trade as they go for the, the Drake. This is acceptable. You get a lot of gold for tier two turrets in the side lane. So this is fine. Like, I think their their response to, to the teleport usage was okay, but I think they just had to play more conservatively. Oh, this is interesting. This is a good call. This is a great call by Liquid. Professional Aleth, thank you for your tier one subscription. This is actually such a good call by Teal. Oh. I mean, they made the mistake, guys. They made the mistake. They made the mistake. But they actually turn it into a good advantage because it looks like they're recalling as this Drake occurs after tier two and they just two men because the thing about Volibear is that the the shields from his E and the heals from his W spam actually make him able to very easily tank Baron and then you have the huge amount of damage coming from a Tristana so it's slower but you're not going to be low HP and you can actually two-man it. Man, that is 
That was really good. Like, I mean, you, you do really have to give credit to Team Liquid's macro and their shot calling. That's great. You know what that is, guys. That's a macro. It started as kind of a macro disaster, but then the macro blast occurred and they got Baron. Very clever. Very clever. Han Thine, I don't know how to say your name. Thank you for your Twitch Prime sub. I'm joining the train. Very good. The the Team Liquid train. I mean, I've said that Team Liquid has had some, like, world-class macro moments this split. Their first game against Cloud9 in the first round robin was fucking beautiful. The, you know, people think I'm a Cloud9 hater, which I kind of am, but <laughs> it's not entirely untrue. Yeah, but I I have respected their the coaching and the drafts and the macro that they have. I think all of those things have been good. I just get frustrated because I think Yun and APA are just not good players. You eating cereal is making me hungry. I wasn't eating cereal. I was eating a burrito bowl. A really good answer there as APA chased him then down and allowed TL to use this Baron buff. Do I like APA all chat? Yeah, I think that's good. Did he call Baron for himself? Wait, 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 what do you say? Baron? Guys? <laughs> that's good. You love to see it. I do think that that adds flavor because the purpose of the broadcast is to show you know, is to empower the players, right? It's to it's to make the player narratives. And so that accomplishes that goal, right? I think it's good. As a Mexican, burrito bowls were sacrilege. They're not sacrilege. I'm sorry. The queen, cuisine of Mexico is so great that we can fusion it in very good ways. I make very legit me Mexican food as well, but I'm sorry, having some rice and salad, beans, cheese, and, uh, you know, delicious marinated chicken, and s homemade salsa all in a bowl is just fucking good. <laughs> I make tons of very legit Mexican food. By the way, Mexican people, your entire your entire cuisine tradition at this point is basically just fusion with other cultures. What do you think Al Pastor is, by the way? Al Pastor was fucking Middle Eastern immigrants using Mexican meat and spices and then making tacos out of it. And Al Pastor owns. All right. Al Pastor is delicious. Where do you think your Modelo beer comes from? That's right. Comes from European monks who came to Mexico and made beer. So, fuck you. <laughs> and I love Al Pastor. Would you rate Italian cuisine over Mexican? Hell nah. Hell nah. Mexican goat cuisine. What about tequila? Get out of here, Pleb. Mezcal's the real deal. You, you, you don't know God's truth if you don't know about Mezcal. Oh, 
the Lee, so nicely done from C9 to find that. Yeah, well played there. They knew the flash was down for APA because he spent it on... Red Barbican, yes. Damn spells. Jojo loses half HP there. A Soon as Cloud9 members move up... And uh, this is good pressure by Team Liquid across the board. ABA's dodging has been quite good this game. Alright, he's like, fuck it. I know I'm dead. Might as well try and all in. Yeah, reasonable. I genuinely don't understand how Thorin hates Mexican cuisine. Well, he hates cheese. <laughs> and he doesn't like spicy food. So, there you go. <laughs> Birria ramen, the best fusion there is. That is delicious. I've had that. I mean, Barbican's okay. It's not my favorite anything. All right, let's watch this next fight. Guys, what is the side lane? I mean, to be fair, Team Liquid can't really side lane because they only have one TP and APA's TP is down and he just used it into mid lane. But Cloud9, you know, you would think they'd be like, hey guys, we have TP advantage. Maybe we should like push a side lane. But no, the fudge factor is here. What is the side lane? Oh my lord. By the way, the Volibear ult does a lot of damage if you can actually hit people with it. What is it? He's at level 2. It does like 350, I think. But the equalizer combined with the Volibear ult is just massive. Like, they don't have a plan here. Blabber's not even in range to Q2 on the Yun anymore. And they just get Giga equalized. And then Blabber dashes into the equalizer. And then they just get three man Volibear ulted. Oh! UK is the best place outside of South Asia to get Indian food. Dude, UK curries are full of nasty ass sugar. They they've been they've been despicified and sugared to to suit the British palate. You can get very good curry in India, but you can also get very good curry in many countries. I will tell you on average the the Indian curry I've had in Korea because it more closely, the food more closely aligns to a Korean palate than a British one, is better than the curry I've had in Britain. I've had so much trash curry in Britain, man. Like, trash. But luckily, Indian's one of those good cuisines that you can you can find a good Indian restaurant just about anywhere. In a major city, you know. The worse looking the place, the better the curry. <laughs> Dude, that's so true. When I lived in New York City, there was like this one street in New York that had all of these rundown curry houses. And every lunchtime, it would just be all of the cab drivers, like the yellow cab drivers, just parked there who are all like Indian. And so you just looked and if you saw like all the cabs there parked for lunch, you knew it was a good spot and, it, and they were really good. Beautiful flash. Hook. Dude, 
Devour's down now. That's a good equalizer too. Really bisects the team. Now they have no tools. Fudge literally just tries to flash onto Yun, but doesn't have the damage to kill him before he's bursted by five. Just grabs or immediate devour. Yeah. Uh, Fudge tried. I mean, he he tries to all in there because he knows something needs to be done, or just they they're gonna get barren and the game is over. So I I actually respect that flash from Fudge. Impact is undervalued, and LPL team under 500 could use him. I mean, I think he'd be a very good player on almost any LCK team if he wanted to go back. Like, are we really going to say that Hanwa wouldn't be upgraded by Impact? D+, KT, they're probably all upgraded by Impact, honestly. He's, a, he's legitimately a very good player. So I guess at the end of the at the end of the game, like the Lee Sin did end up getting some value early on, but I just don't see it as necessary to take this pick at R two for Cloud Nine, and like the Renekton priority has been super wacky. I mean that's it. They lose all their inhibs now. I mean, to be fair, he, you know, Fudge's lane was trolled by Blabber this game on that Lee Sin first blood uh, with the, with the, uh, onto the rumble. But that's a very dangerous lane to exist in as Renekton in the first place, so you just don't want to make it even more volatile. Good engage by Core. Core has been very good in these playoffs, honestly. Like, he's been pretty underwhelming over the last couple of years, but the reason why these rel bands are coming through is they're actually support rel bands, and they're smart. All right, guys, quick bathroom break. I'm going to refill my coffee, and I'll be back.
All right. We're back. For game three. <clears throat> They've been pretty convincing so far. They've been looking on red side. You got to get some some big counter. <laughs> All right. So the Calista is going to be swapped out here <clears throat> in the blue side bands. They keep the Nico and Ari out. We're going to take the Nautilus out now. Interesting. So we've dropped the Rel. Rel is still going to be a great pick. TL, I think, should pick it. Yep. They absolutely should. And now we're seeing the pivot from C9. I guess we, we're, we're just going to give up the Varus every game. And instead, we need to play Lucian Nami through the bot sides. Strong bot sides. Ziggs is up this time, so it gets picked again. Once more for blue sides. Jin Zhao, they are skirmishing heavy. Rel is still a flex pick, but it's almost certainly for a core. Yeah, Karma mid could be good here for sure. Okay, they're going to take Karma, try and push in the mid lane and empower the Jin Zhao and the Lucian. I mean, you could play Jace top here, potentially, where you're going to get the R5 counter pick. So you see, ooh, Vi Renekton is pretty rough to play Jace into, though. Rumble? I think you should take Rumble here. I think you should take Rumble. I mean, the Olaf... Okay, let's explain this. I think the Olaf is a good pick. Again, we've seen the Olaf pick a lot. Um, we saw it most recently that I remember last week when BDS picked it up. Right? Um, but when you have the Karma... And you're going against kind of lower mobility carries, especially because Ziggs relies on Satchel Charge to knock you away as well. You know, a ghosting, ulting Olaf, is if Ziggs just satchels himself, is not going to be enough to keep the Olaf off of him. Um, and we do see a lot, like when teams play Varus Ash, there is a lot of, you know, you kind of give up these picks and then you R5 Olaf counter with Karma. So this is something that we've seen from a lot of teams all over the world. Seen it from, I don't know, uh, D plus Kia, probably the best team to have used this, or like. Everyone's so hyped for this, and it is the Olaf. Honestly, that is a like that's a one v nine potential type of champion. Yeah, I mean, it really does bust through onto the carries, which is very very good. I mean, I like the Olaf pick here. But, you know, JoJo has been doing really well on more carries, and so putting him on Karma, I think, is a risk, because he's been one... Even though his stat, he didn't even get a kill in their last series, he he was actually probably Cloud9's best-performing player. He was, like, winning the Yone matchup into Karma in mid lane. That's crazy. You go Sedge Jungle instead of Jin, I, or Jin Zhao. I think this Jin Zhao is fine, because you need... You need damage and you need carry out of the jungle if you're going to play the Karma, I think. And it's just more backline threats onto low mobility carries. I don't I don't have a problem with this Jin Zhao. I actually like this draft for Cloud9. What happened to the Jarvan Rumble combo? You could run that here too. Like, I think you could absolutely run Jarvan Rumble if you're Cloud9. I mean, it, it still exists. It's still there. JK, Fudge is going to die at level 1. No. He has Ghost. Oh, whew, close. All right, well, they got F Flash and Ignite out. Flash of Renekton, Ignite of Core JJ. That was very lucky he got out of that. Don't you think instead of Lucia Nami, they go some engage support with the late game carry? <sighs> I mean, that's clearly not how they want to play the game, is all I can say. It's not bad for us, right? Because uh, we know that they can invade our top side. So, obviously, nice little trap there. But I think we, uh, if we're going to use summoner spells, we should use one more summoner spell to guarantee the kill. Otherwise, don't use summoner spells and just take the chunk. But it's not bad. 
Going it's back true by spawn. The first question I wanted to ask you, you guys are two up in the series. Uh, you guys have been playing A, extremely bloody throughout the playoffs. So like, is this a surprising like kind of series for you and how well you guys have been playing going into the playoffs? Just because I know you have been the harshest critic of like how slow you guys have been playing during regular season. Oh, no, like, I mean, once we got in playoffs, I think we sped up our play quite well. So it's not surprising how well we're playing today. It's just regular season was kind of baffling to us because if you watch our scrims, we're, like, probably close to an LPL team, and then you watch our stage games, and we're definitely, like, an NACL team. We're just so slow, right? So uh, we're, we're much happier with how we're playing at the moment. Sweet. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. And we're going to sen be sending this straight to the casters. And Spawn, definitely a, a big critic, you know, of himself and of his team. He's always going to be looking for that that extra bit of improvement. I mean, one of the tweets yep, I Spawn was a caster on LPL. Yeah, yeah, you know, he was for a long time. Coach smile. Well, probably after they win the series. You know, He's a friend of mine. Good guy. Uh, very good guy. Very focused on that. Yeah. Uh, Spawn definitely very much uh, <clears throat> entwined in this squad success, and a lot of it has been off of bot side. So. If we can get Vi coming down here again, they've got a nice Quinn for the one time. No, I mean, Quinn is good into Renekton, but I don't think Quinn meshes with the composition very well because you want to empower using the Karma in the mid and late game. You want to empower a team fight carry. We're just going to, you know, ult and ghost and run over the Varus and the Ziggs. In. Impact gets a freebie on the recall, just gets to walk back to lane here, and he's gonna have that additional ruby crystal and refill his health. Crash here and see if they can get the poke down. We have to also kind of track the fallout of this level one because Impact started E, but Fudge started W, and Fudge, because he didn't have his Q level one, he basically lost full prio in that lane. Fudge started W? We can get. Oh, no, like, I mean, once we got in playoffs, I think... Sorry, I was watching well. Spawn. I wasn't watching this. It's not surprising how well we're playing today. It's just regular season was kind of baffling to us because if you watch our scrims, we're, like, probably... Interesting. ...to an LPL team, and then you yeah. watch our stage games, and we're definitely, like, an, an, an ACL team. Yeah, that's interesting. Right? So, interesting interesting uh, point. Good point by Azale. We're playing at the moment. Sweet. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it, and we're going to sen be sending this straight to the casters. And Spawn definitely a, a big critic, you know, of himself and of his team. He's always going to be looking for that that extra bit of improvement. I mean, one of the tweets the that was up on the screen was, you know, when are we going to see the TL coach smile? Well, probably after they win this series. You know, the job's not done yet. Uh, and I know he's definitely very focused on that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Spawn definitely very much. Uh, <laughs> I went to sleep after game two, excited for the reverse sweep. Oh, yeah. We're so psyched for the reverse sweep. They've got a nice wave building. You can see they're slowly stacking it. Only last hitting right now. And the Vi clearing down towards bottom side. Poor JJ and Jan uh, can try and set themselves up for some more success as well. It looks like him going to Krugs uh, and not walking all the way over. They're just going to let it crash here and see if they can get the poke down. We have to also kind of track the fallout of this level one because Impact started E, but Fudge started W. And Fudge yeah, he does get a cheater recall here. That's pretty powerful for Impacts in the top side. Impact gets a freebie on the recall, just gets to walk back to lane here, and he's going to have that additional ruby crystal and refill his health. And both top laners spending their mobility summoners, but also Core JJ committed the ignite. That's not going to have any meaningful consequences because it has just now come back off of cooldown there in the bottom lane. It meant less kill pressure for the level one, level two, but everything's pretty much back to stock standard now as Blabber waiting for the opportunity to if maybe make a gank e, up here. Up. Yeah, it's all about the slice. If Impact tries to slice, Blabber will show up, but he spent a lot of time hanging out in this brush, and with the wave about to crash into the turret, it's just time to take the scuttle crash. That's just not one of those mistakes that Impact makes, right? The wave yeah. is pushing heavily towards him. It'd be a dangerous trade anyway, so he's just going to let it crash. And even though it looks like there's non-action on the bottom side of the map, because they know that Umpty is bottom side here for Cloud9, Berserker goes for the recall there, even though it's not a cannon wave. And so the Lucian does miss out on that extra wave that got pushed into the tower. Um, and so merely by having junglers on opposite sides there, they still get that kind of presence and that kind of little uh, advantage there. This now is going to be a better recall for Yawn. He goes back, he gets his boots plus an extra cloth armor here. And it's like a stop. Just gets juggled around a little bit by those satchels. But that's actually pretty awkward because Core's here now and Core has flash and ignite back and Jojo's low and Jojo has to push out this wave because he hasn't actually been able to TP back. So if Jojo's they need E on Ziggs. This could be him dying. 
for it, JJ. Should look for the crash down here. Oh, he tries to find the flash shattering strike, but JoJo's fast enough with the response. Flash for flash, support versus mid. Yeah, you can always see those plays coming because as soon as you start your Q animation on a rail, JoJo's like, well, I'm definitely flashing because there's no way he's queuing the middle of lane for no reason. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you can do uh, the mind games though, and, up and you can just walk up and queue the middle of lane Q's and then, air. yeah, you'll look- Imagine this KT with MT, dude. Ah, uh, I'm so sad MT didn't, never got to a good LCK team. He was he's always been legitimately very good. Mind games and this one is the guaranteed trade and you're still happy with a flash for flash trade as 4JJ because guess what? You have hex flash and in the bottom lane where you get to push up on Lucianami like this. The thing is if you take Lucianami, you're playing Lucianami properly, you actually do have to step forward. Uh, with the Lucian, right, to create pressure, to get cullings off, to get, uh, ch you know, poke damage off. And that's where you get very vulnerable to Vialts that can be followed up on by, you know, Rel, Rel Engage. So, Berserker is going to have to be, you know, playing around Cleanse is going to be very important for Berserker in the front line. will clean up the drake just a little bit after that point still a cs advantage up in the top side for the renekton of impact a big part of that again okay mt still not six not being what they would just trading grubs for drake not too much action in the early game oh oh man jojo just picking those up like they're power-ups man you gotta not step on all of them maybe you do <laughs> Looking at it right now, I don't see the power up. No, I mean, there's there's no special you don't know buff. Unless you try. Yeah, you I know? guess sometimes it's uh, like they do look a lot like playing a new game. You got to see if you can fall off the cliff. Right? Spoiled honey fruits. Uh, honestly, though, uh, still going to be the highlight here is the synergy that Karma has with the top. Uh, lot slower game than last time. But this is fine for Cloud Nine. You know, they can afford to play a late game because this, you know, Olaf and team fights is going to be an absolute menace. It's a good pick. It's time to hunt down the crocodile. Impact with the slice and dice and flash to get away from the binding. Blabber still chasing. Yeah, he's still dead. Oh, he's not? Wow, that was crazy. So right now, Fudge is a level down on him. And he actually flashes out of the karma route, which is pretty huge. So you see the all in, dashes back to get the double E, then flashes. Right? So Jojo comes in, tries to get the Karma root, flashes so that he doesn't get rooted. And they're still coming in. Blabber goes in with E, gets the knock up, but they get close enough that he gets an empowered Q. He actually waits right until his Fury ticks up as a result of his ult, gets the Q, and then W's Fudge after Fudge's ult. And that's very well played by Impact. But yeah, I mean, it's pretty awkward because Jojo walks up here and Blabber as well, and they don't actually path down to like corral him in there. So it's kind of a botched gank by Cloud9 because I think their pathing's pretty bad. Right? Like, why are we letting him into a situation where he can just E? E, E, flash. Impact plays it very well, but Jojo and Blabber just like don't actually intercept him. Yeah, I get a plate too in mid. Impact realizes he can just get health from queuing the minion waves. <laughs> Top die. Carbon in a flash with a level one chaos, yeah. I mean, he actually just destroyed Cloud Nine's whole game right there. Not from the level one chaos. 
No, it was from the gank, the rel gank. Karma didn't have flash from the rel gank. But I think you absolutely can play that better in terms of pathing. Karma didn't need flash to root him. No, Karma could have just had better positioning in the lane to root him. Yeah, very weird. I don't know why they just like sprinted at Renekton instead of just getting behind him first. That's not the problem. That that should be a guaranteed route. Jojo is just not in the center of the lane when he starts the route. They also do fuck up the juggle, as Ail's right. Like, Blabber steps out of turret range, but also the Olaf ult is ended, so they get a stun onto Fudge. Just kind of a comedy of errors right there. Yeah, I agree. Kobe's got some good points here. It was just a bad play. And it was it was a it was a good play by impact in order to survive. He had very good patience with his rage for his empowered Q under turret. And then he waited to W until the CC fell off. But yeah, basically there are multiple mistakes there. Even the the tower juggling was bad. You know, I think part of the problem with this, though, is that Cloud9 kind of wants to play through two sides of the map with the Lucia, Nami, and the Olaf, right? So it becomes awkward because you kind of want both of these things to get ahead. So... Actually, get the root onto Berserker too. No mana onto Yun. I don't know why they call him Yun. His name is Yun in Korean. Yun. Nice ult too. The 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 Zig's ult underrated in terms of contribution to these kind of dives. They also force Fudge's TP, and he doesn't get shit. So now he's gonna lose more plates on the top side. Total disaster, totally worth trading Core JJ for that kill. Berserker now has to go topside. They're going to try and control Void Grubs, potentially. He's a cannon wave, so Berserker will get most of this farm. I like this, you know, one thing that's good about Team Liquid is their lane assignments. You know, they keep uh, APA down here because Fudge is staying down, which means they're going to keep it pushed in, right? They immediately move Varus into the mid lane. Now Berserker has to take this, even though they lost a couple plates, then recall into the mid lane. It's just very awkward. Like, Team Liquid's really good at getting fast lane assignments that then, you know, get free plates or keep people on their toes and force them into a reactionary state because now they get a plate in mid as well. Yeah, 
All right, we agree to not. It was a duel. <laughs> and you see that when they do these recalls, because now they want Olaf on the top side because they don't want Olaf versus Ziggs in the bot side, then again, they lose CS at the turrets. They lose plates in these scenarios. They're trying to rematch Karma versus the Ziggs, but the tempo and the pressure on the map is just Team Liquid's the entire time, basically, as a result. But they might, especially if Impact is, backs off and is going to be able to come. All right, maybe Impact doesn't want to use a teleport for it, but if he does, I swear, like, this is such a trap for Cloud9. C9 still trying to position around it, see if maybe there's something they can do. Yeah, Umpty and Core just going to clear out the vision. Yeah, I think Cloud9's getting the middle. Yeah, I don't see Renekton, so they're getting really scared. They wasted their top lane TP on the play, trying to counter the dive and bot. Trading ult for ult right there. Oh god, you're winning on both sides of the maps map now for Team Liquid. It's a disaster. Is it true that there are pros who don't want to play with or involved, be involved in the development of Rookie? I'm sure there are some pros right like that, but I don't think that's necessarily true. A little bit of CC on Core JJ, but they just don't have the follow up in time to try to get another pick there. This worked in game one. Am I planning to watch the LCK after? Uh, I mean, I'm going to watch the Hanwha series versus Kwangdong, and then I'm going to watch the KD or the KT D Plus series. But I'm not going to watch it live, guys. Well, I will watch it live, but I'm not going to stream it because I can't co-stream. The whole PCS, what's the PCS situation? You mean the VCS situation? Just making sure that there is no early gold injection possible for Cloud9, no play possible. Uh, sometimes when you have those neutralizing moves from them, that's all that you need on the side of TL because they're very happy to get that. They yeah, I mean, what can you do? We talked about it on Summoning Inside a little bit. Like, they're still doing the investigation. Like, it's obviously fucked up. They were match fixing, then they deserve lifetime bans. Most likely. So you really need, when you're playing Lucian Nami, you really need to have the pressure in the mid lane. Because that's what it does. It allows you to poke out and get mid pressure and then get river control for objectives. That's the power of, of the Lucian Nami. Oh, I don't care if you distract the medic, that's fine. Basically, just about dead. 
And this is the struggles, you know, the range is already becoming such an issue. It's so difficult to actually close the gap on APA and put that meaningful threat onto him without fully committing everything you have to him. And if you do that, all of a sudden, the Renekton is really strong, the Vive's really strong, the Rel counter engage, all becomes very, very problematic. And the uh, Seraphs is transformed, so the Ziggs has Flash, Satchel, and a possible shield popping up with his transformed Seraphs. So it, even if you full send in there... It's What's the over-under of people that Virtue Signal the past and the lulc and ending up casting or working for the Esports World Cup? Extremely high. Extremely high. It's going to be gross, guys. You know, all those people who insisted that they, they cared about, you know, social justice and all of these issues... Yeah, they'll, they'll all be casting at the Esports World Cup. Don't worry. If they cared about Neom, they'll be there. If they cared about Carlos tweeting, they'll be there. Okay, T Fudge TP's back in again. Blabber's already in this fight. His ult is now going to be down by the time that they can actually engage this. So he's just isolated and killed. That is a really terrible engage by Cloud9. Fudge had to use all of his summoners and ult to run around in a circle doing nothing. He literally just gets attacked by Yun. This is absolutely how you do not play this. So you get control of mid. You have wards in, into the river right here. Position here in game number three. Sundered Sky completed for the vibe. Pretty big deal there. Black Cleaver on the Renekton. Olaf at least been buffed up with this karma. But Renekton already is dropping down and not using TP, and C9 is just behind the play again. And you just have this disconnect, right? Because JoJo isn't here. So if you if you actually want to empower, like you actually need karma to be with the main crew. So you can provide speed, shields, everything like that, because that's the point of your composition. If Karma is in bot lane and doesn't want to use TP, like, riddle me this. What the fuck is the point of making this TP play if Jojo Pion's going to be on the side doing absolutely nothing? Because you, these are your carries. You need them into the back line of the fight, and you don't want to fight these skirmishes. You want to fight front to back where the Olaf just runs through their front line. I mean, I just think it's hilarious because, look, you get onto JoJo here. The the Jin Zhao ult ends right as the Ziggs ult comes through, so he doesn't actually stop any of the Ziggs damage. And then Umti magically gets out of it, this, which is even crazier. But look at the timing on the Jin ult. It's very well done by APA. Right? <laughs> he ults onto JoJo and then cues back. He cues back onto Blabber. So they used all of that time, all of those summoners, all of those ults to get absolutely nothing done. Trying to stop it. Yon's here on the front. Not a lot of mana left on the Varus. Keep that in mind. Big chunk onto Yon there from the inner flame. But Fudge is already dead. Olaf without a Ragnarok is just a big melee minion. And Team Liquid's coming to farm him. Yon with the flash. Yon still has flash, so he draw he uh dodges the Q. And now they're up three Drakes in. Cloud9 just has no setup. I think, you know, we talked about this when we reviewed the series that they played against FlyQuest, but they have no idea how to actually execute their compositions. They don't have any idea of their win conditions. They don't know how to play. I mean, the Olaf is a legitimately an extremely good pick here, but they're playing it so shittily that they can't do. Front to back looks so cursed through Ziggs and Varus abilities, isolating Olaf. Nah, he should just run through, guys. I think he should just run through into the back line. He should be fine. He can get Nami shield, he can get Karma shield, you know, Blabber can go on go in with him. It's fine. And a lot of times you can 
see in the gameplay when the shot calling just gets so desperate and you know they don't have a lot of options they're yeah. just trying anything there even trying to you know flash in for a mantra q maybe get a, <laughs> so something crazy happening it is it is going really really rough for cloud 90 you can start to see it in some of the choices that they're making team liquid are closing but i mean just the setup on that fight was so bad I mean, the Olaf used literally both of his sums and his ult while being isolated and not being able to do anything. They lose any opportunity for international competition until the next chance would be Five Worlds sending it. later on this year. They're going Got after it. Impact. A TP is coming in, and Team Liquid doesn't want to... Remember, Fudge doesn't have TP now. Chance would be Five Worlds sending it. later on this year. They're going Got after it. Impact. A TP is coming in, and Team Liquid doesn't want to let him get away with it. Blabber just flashing into the engage on Blabber. doesn't feel like ulting, so he gets stunned by Impact and then queued by Umti. So he just gets stun locked and died without using his summoner spell or his ultimate. Even though if he had proactively used his Jin Zhao ult here, he might have been able to to have impact be isolated against the rest of his team. So if he sees Rel coming over the wall and he just ults right here, he can actually create a zone where the rest of his team might be able to do something or they might be able to wait. But Fudge is so far away, it's very difficult. C9 just never actually gets a fight, like a front-to-back 5v5. I mean, it's good by TL. Like, they're not giving them the fights that they would normally flourish in, but pretty big yikes. It's feeling like uh, one team has a coaching staff and one that doesn't. I mean, that's like actually literally true, though. Cloud and I ran out of money and don't have any coaches. Oh, yeah. Impact drift. Eh. Oh, he's dead. That Ziggs ult does so much damage. Alright. See, Cloud9 finally gets the front to back. Okay, Fudge, Axe, Miss. Alright, Impact's gonna die, though. Oh, no, he doesn't? Alright, so this is what it looks like when Cloud9 actually gets the fight that they want, guys. His composition is not terrible. Now they are actually capable of getting together and running through the enemy team composition. Fudge is already ghosted. He and Blabber should be in the front line. Uh, Vulcan takes a bunch of damage, but you can see Olaf just heal tanking and also having a million shields. Then you can get Blabber back into the into the front line or into the back line rather. Are you serious? They didn't have money for coaches. Well, they don't have any, and they probably spent a lot of money on JoJo. So I'm guessing they don't have money for coaches. Why would they just have one on-site coach? Umdi does troll this, though, by queuing over that wall, because the queuing over that wall gets him in this position where he's picked off. If, if he literally just queues into his team, this becomes a very different fight, I think. Because he, 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 I mean, he doesn't have ults, but still. Certainly everybody doesn't die there, because it would take longer to kill Umdi. 
Predictions for today's LCK match. KT wins in a very sloppy, fucking horrible series. Thing is, Blabber has ult again, though. See? So they use so much on trying to kill Blabber that you can see Core just has to run out of this as Fudge gets onto the back line again. Monty's contractually obliged to say it's sloppy so that he's not getting excited. Medic, I hate this version of KT. I, I am never excited about this version of KT. This version of KT sucks balls. Mr. Epics, what are your thoughts on Saudi sports washing? As an F1, I feel like the some form of this has been around forever. So for other industries are seeing it. I mean, I think it's horrible. I'll probably do a video on this, guys. I'm, I'm, I'm sick of this garbage. And I'm sick. Look, I don't care if you take the Saudi bag. Let's be very clear. I do not care if people take the bag from Saudi Arabia and take the money. I don't. I care if you have used your position within the esports industry to call out other people for their allegedly unethical behavior while then literally going for like going and working directly for an authoritarian government with human rights abuses. That's what I care about. The hypocrisy. If you just shut your little fucking mouth and don't type with your little thumbs into Twitter some bullshit pretending you have ethics, then fine. You just get the bag. It's cool. That's a choice you're making. I'm not here to tell you what your ethics should be, but if you have told me you have ethics, well, you will be held accountable to those. College was a mistake. Is subscribe with Twitch Prime. <laughs> Funny name. I, I just don't get it, man. You know, nobody forced you to pretend that you have that you have moral stances on social media. Nobody forced you to do that. So if you actually hold these moral stances, then you you literally cannot work with Saudi Arabia. If you care, if you care about LGBT rights. You cannot work with the Saudi Arabian government, period. Facts. Are we okay with people who said those things and also won't take the money? Yeah, fine. Yeah, that's fine. Totally fine. Gets harder to... But the problem, guys, is that people use... People on social media use certain things in esports, such as, like, Carlos with a video of Andrew Tate in the background, to, like... Fuck up Carlos's life. And I'm not saying him partying with Andrew Tate is good because it's like obviously dumb and not not good. But if we're going to all if we're all going to dogpile Carlos for that, then why can't we just do it when it matters a million fucking times more? Right. When it when it really matters that we know factually that the purpose of the esports World Cup is to burnish Saudi Arabia's image and to make sure that people like them and don't focus on the human rights issues. And there are extensive abuses in this space. That's what I have a problem with. If, if you hated Neom, you should hate this a bazillion times more. That's it. If, if your stance is... I don't give a shit about what happens other places and I'm just in it for me and I want the bag, then fine. But don't go out there and try and win social media points and win, win in the PR game by bagging on other people on social media. It's fucked up. Yes, formation. Carlos is a bad person for associating with one man who is horrible to a lot of women. However, it's okay for everyone to associate with an entire nation which is horrible to all its women. Exactly. 
Exactly. Been a fan of yours for years. Thanks for all the years of great content. I also blame you for making a KT fan during the <laughs> someday Pickaboo era. Yeah, well, we all are suffering now. So, I mean, this is my problem, guys. Let's keep going. Finish off your kill target, and they, they just have to keep on looking for something. So this is how you use it. Yes, Berserker wants to chunk out people. Okay, he takes about an equal chunk in response. Empty already on the flank. And Fudge isn't there again. I mean, you, you literally just can't fight this way, right? If you are C9, this is what I mean by they don't understand the win conditions of their compositions. So Fudge is doing Raptors. Fudge is doing Raptors. Impact sees him, right? They know where Impact is. There's a ward right there. Impact, Impact sees him. He marks Fudge and is like, all right, Fudge, if you want to get to this fight, you're going to have to blow Ghost and Ult well in advance of the fight to get through me. And so why is Berserker dashing forward when Vi is on the flank? They literally can get there faster from all angles. Here's Rel. And the one thing that matters, this guy, Olaf, is the most important person in this composition. He's the most important. He has to be there. And he's never there. He's never there. And so Berserker dashes forward with the culling. Not the time you want to dash forward. Yun misses his ultimate. But he just sidesteps. It doesn't matter. APA throws out the bomb. Does a pretty good amount of damage to Berserker right here. Also Jojo Pion, I guess. Oh, Umti hits him actually with the Q. So Umti hits him with a full Q auto E combo, right? And then Berserker actually has to flash out of this situation. But Fudge doesn't need to be doing Raptors right now. And if Fudge is doing Raptors, why is Berserker dashing forward? He has no idea where the fuck anybody is. Berserker literally flashes. Yun flashes, follows him. Then Umti just ults him. And now we have Fudge. And remember, I said, Fudge is going to have to use his ult and Ghost just to get out of the situation. He literally has to ult just to get here. He needs that ult to get through the front line of Team Liquid. You, ha you, you literally picked the Olaf to combo with Karma to get into the back line to kill Ziggs and Varus. And Varus is flashing forward in these fights because Olaf is not there. He has wasted two, like, two ults now, Fudge, to get into these fights. And again, I don't want to paint this as like, this is all Fudge's problem. His team engaged while he was doing Raptors. Should he have been doing Raptors? Especially when he sees Renekton there? Probably not. But, like, he can't... Unless he's, like, mind-controlling Berserker to just dash forward into the enemy team. Umti was on the flank. It was a dumb play by Berserker. And this is one of the things that makes Playoff PL so exciting is that you can win a fight against them, but they're going to get... Yes, they knew Fudge was being zoned and engaged anyway. This is what I'm talking about. Cloud9 has no... They, they like, get a composition... It's like they're a pilot that's been given a plane and then they just nose dive directly into the ground. They have no idea how to play out any composition. It's tragic. I see the C9 Berserker breaking point video. I did not. See, that's an Onanation. It's just pathetic. Like, it's a pathetic that this is a professional League of Legends team. This gets so tough though. This late in the game, level 16 Ziggs completed the death cap three items. Even just the ulti alone on a squishy member means you're basically out of the fight. Yeah. If you hit in the middle, it does 1200. And the problem, again, with these Cloud9 comps we've been mentioning, if they don't get ahead early, the basic stat that they're always down just terrible. Is range. And so your team is going to naturally group up. And it makes it very hard to avoid that damage. APA. What's going on with Thanatos? I don't know. From those enchanted inner flames. As impact is gonna be the one man split push troop over here in mid trying to provide they don't understand any comp like they don't understand front to back comps 
They fucking failed at like a million comps versus FlyQuest. Didn't know how to flank, didn't know how to fight front to back, don't know how to do fucking anything. Don't know how to group, don't know how to use CP. It's absolute shit. This team is fucking shit. Continues from impact the Baron still 45 seconds left as Team Liquid claims inhibitor number one. Ooh, these uh 545 now 640 AP Ziggs autos demolishing objectives. Absolute insanity here. Team Liquid on the brink of a rematch with What's more depressing, C9's player, the fact that they are top three in NA. I mean, 100 Thieves is also garbage. I mean, they're all garbage in different ways, but Team Liquid at least plays like a fucking team. And they know what they should be doing in a given situation. And they've had, like, very good macro plays. And, like, the Baron call last game was a great example. It's a really good Baron. Like, legit, this team has very good macro. Like, not even just in an NA sense. Like, just generally good macro. I mean, I don't think Licorice necessarily fixes this team. They have no shot calling. That's the problem. They, they don't have a brain. So unless Licorice is going to, like, fix all their shot calling issues, which is would be unusual for a top laner. Dude, they refuse to have one engagement. I mean, Fudge needs to be there, right? Fudge needs to be there. Otherwise, they have no threat. I mean, look how much damage this is doing to them. They literally just get CC'd into oblivion by Rel... By Rel, Vi, and then the Chain of Corruption, the Verisult. Right? Remember, this is... This is a three versus four, effectively, because Berserker is ulting over the wall. And they get absolutely blasted by this Varus, who is just autoing for free all over Blabber. Okay, Q. Oop. Yep. APA also throws a bomb here. I mean, APA has very good awareness of where his team is on the map, so he can use his ult to affect these combats or to affect the dives. I think Team Liquid play well, guys. Legit. Wow, it's crazy. I mean, Team Liquid played really well this series. Cloud9 is terrible, though. They are they are so terrible. I mean, they looked really bad in the FlyQuest series, but they, they fixed absolutely nothing in the last week. I just don't understand how you could have five veteran players who have no idea how to play out win conditions of team comps. Like, no idea. Not even close. Not even close. 
All right, guys, I got to go watch D-plus versus uh, KT for tomorrow. Um, but I'll be back tomorrow for war games, obviously. Um, I, you know, if I just start Hanwha versus Kwangdong now, first off, wasn't a very good series. And uh, second off, doesn't have the most bearing on what we're doing. And probably a lot of you guys are just going to go leave to watch the live series anyway. So uh, we will be back tomorrow, probably for the LCS finals, as well as uh, for this KT versus D plus series. I will have already seen the KT versus D plus series because, like I said, because I'm going to watch it now. Um, but yeah. Happy Easter, everybody. Hope you're having a good one. Bye.